started Stop. as a tympanic ring. If you take the tympanic ring of the temporal bone, it looks like this almost like. So, which is deficient superiorly, which is called a notch of remnants at this level. I am not showing this ring completely. The tympanic membrane is attached to the tympanic ring like this, almost like this. Here, I could see, I could show you all about if this is uh, the external artery canal, this my fingers are making the external artery canal, the tympanic membrane is looking like this, especially my right tympanic membrane is looking like this. So anterior inferiorly will be the cone of light, this is the handle of malleus which I am showing, this is the parts placida which is thinned out, as you could see this is thinned out over here, and this is the tensa which is thick, and this is the anterior malleolar fold, this is the posterior malleolar fold. For example, this is the squamous temporal bone, squamous part of the temporal bone which is coming from above, it gives a small, it gives a small, Come forward, come forward, put your hand like this. It gives a small projection called as scutum. This other hand which is there, this is something called as scutum, which is giving a small projection towards the particular notch of remnants which is deficient superiorly. And this will give, this alignment will be something like this, the posterior superiorly. Scutum will be the most, what you say, prominent and sharp bony projection in a radiological examination. So this is how you can make your own tympanic membrane with a plastic cover and this ring which you ring bang metallic bangle which you wear to your hand and this being the squamous temporal one this is a scutum which is coming from there of course there is a stylite process below it like this which is there internal which cannot be seen and there is an external artery canal if you try to see there is an external artery canal like this okay so external artery canal will be like this and your tympanic membrane will be seen like this this is a basic understanding of how the tympanic bone and the particular Tympanic membrane and your parts tensa and parts placida are aligned along with the sputum inside the ear canal. This is pertinent to the right tympanic membrane. It has a cone of light is anterior inferior here. Okay, in the same way, you can draw a line here on the hand of malleus vertically and then draw horizontally one more line so that you can make antero superior, posterior superior, antero inferior, posterior inferior, four quadrants of the tympanic membrane, which can be understood like this. Sometimes you can see the cardiac tympani running behind the handle of malleus, this can be the cardiac tympanic running behind the handle of malleus. There will be, this, this particular two fingers are becoming like head of the malleus and there will be incus behind. So head of the malleus will be here and incus will be here and stapes will be a bit behind like this. Okay. This is a basic understanding of your tympanic membrane along with your tympanic bone. So tympanic bone superiorly gives rise to something called as tympanosquamous suture. Tympanos squamous suture. So tympanos squamous suture and anterior, anteriorly and superiorly, anterior inferiorly and superiorly, anterior part only. And uh, here will be the mastered bone which is present over here. This tympanic bone has got connections with the tympanos squamous suture here and this is the tympano mastoid. If this is a mastoid bone, this is a tympano mastoid suture. This suture is a tympano mastoid suture, this is a tympano squamous suture. The flap which we are going to elevate during surgery, so this this fibrous annulus, we are going to put a round knife here and then lift it like this. You have to separate it from tympanosquamous suture anteriorly and tympanomastoid suture posteriorly. That comes, once you lift it up, you can see the medullary structure very easily. Okay, that's it about the tympanic bone and tympanic membrane.